Welcome to Garden Chatter, where we connect gardeners, bloggers, and experts so that we can all grow and learn together. Tonight, we get to have some chicken talk. We have a guest that um, has a Fresh Eggs Daily blog. We'll meet her in just a second. And uh, my co-host, Bren, met our guest at the Garden Blogger Conference in Atlanta. So, Bren, do you want to go ahead and introduce our guest and then maybe let people know how they can join in the conversation? Sure, yeah, thank you, Adam. Um, I'm really excited to have Lisa Steele on tonight. Um, she is the author over at Fresh Eggs Daily, and you got to click over there. She's got cute boots we've all been talking about. So hopefully we could talk a little more about, about that later in the presentation here. <laughs> So um, before we get into the interviews, I'd like to invite everyone that is watching us live tonight on the Google Hangout. You can take your cursor, click right up at the top. Uh, you'll see a grid up here. Click the grid. You'll see a Q&A up here. Click it again. And you'll get a nice little column on the right-hand side where we welcome you to ask questions or just say hi so we know you're out there. And um, you can also join in the conversation on the hashtag garden chatter. So uh, I think we're all set. Are you ready, Adam? Let's go. Let's do some chicken talking. <laughs> yeah. So Lisa, um, first of all, how are you? And then maybe you could tell us a little bit about where you are and just what you've been up to and how you got to uh, doing the Fresh Eggs Daily blog. Sure. I actually, I just finished locking everybody up. It's dark now, so they're all locked up in their coops. So this was a perfect time to chat with you. Um, but I, I do blog, as you mentioned, on Fresh Eggs Daily, and I have a Facebook page of the same name. And I was asked to speak at the Garden Bloggers Conference uh, in February, where I met Bren, and we kind of just hit it off. And so she asked me to, if I wanted to be on the show and, and come chat with you a little bit about chickens and gardening. Excellent. How many um, chickens do you have, or what kinds of chickens, or maybe how long have you had chickens? I, <laughs> I've had chickens for uh, going on seven years, and right now we have a dozen chickens and a rooster, and um, I've had as many as three dozen, uh, but I like about a dozen. You know, it's enough eggs for, for the week for us to eat, and it's manageable. I remember all their names and everything. So um, I have a bunch of different breeds that lay all different color eggs. Um, Ben's favorites, the Americanas, that lay the blue eggs. And I have some regular brown egg layers and just kind of a mixed flock. Bryn, did you have any questions you wanted to fire off or should we? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I know you yeah. did. I'm um, sorry. I'm just like a million questions because I've always been really, um, I like chickens. They're cute, but they, you know, I, I still have a little <laughs> city, city in me. I would probably have to definitely raise the chickens that you get the eggs from, not the ones for, you know, meats or uh, the uh, chickens, I said rabbits. So um, anyway, so you had mentioned that you lock the chickens up at night. Um, that's probably one of my biggest issues living out here in the country is because I'd have to have some type of structure or something to protect the chickens because we have like this afternoon we watched an eagle and a new eagle fly over and I'm sure they would enjoy my chickens. <laughs> Do you have any tips about yeah. keeping them safe? Well, that, that is the biggest problem. I mean, that's, that's like the one downside is that everything wants to eat them. Mm -hmm. Dogs, foxes, eagles, hawks, you know, pretty much anything. Um, so we have a, a big enclosed run that's covered, and they spend their days in that, and then they live in their coop. You know, at night they sleep in their coop, which is, it's like Fort Knox. I mean, it's locked and double locked, and it's got hardware cloth on the windows and everything. But, you know, once you've got your setup down, it's really easy. You know, I only let them out when we're outside with them. Um, we see foxes just kind of run across the backyard. You know, we have dogs out, but you know, the, the predators get really bold. So, mm -hmm. sure. And then um, that's kind of it's good to know. Um, I know there's lots of different um, types of houses for them. I don't know what you call them: sheds, coops, coops, right? Um, yeah. yeah. 
are you seeing are you seeing more people I mean you have great following I'm assuming you know you know a lot of new people who um, are really interested in raising their own chickens is that seem like a trend that's growing it, it, it is especially in the, the small backyard flocks you know like you said you just want a couple you, you just want some eggs you know three or five you get a little coop for them um, put it in your backyard you know, you have a little garden, you have your chickens, and, and you're really self-sufficient at that point. You know, you don't have to, we don't eat our chickens, we just eat the eggs. Wow. Um, but we do have a rooster, so I could keep hatching eggs and just keep my flock going pretty much indefinitely. Very cool. Um, I could talk your ear off about it. <laughs> But I, I was really excited last year. We were at a um, a theme park with my teenagers, and um, you know it's a very popular park in Ohio, uh, where people go to ride roller coasters and things. And they actually have an, a natural location in the back of the park, uh, right there on Lake Erie, and they had a cute chicken coop with the cover I, I Instagrammed it. It had a neat little. I mean, it only took up maybe three and a half by four feet totally enclosed and I just was really excited to see all the people that were just gawking at it and there were just like three little chickens in there but it, it was neat to see people getting excited about that and um, I better let Adam talk because I'll just keep going. <laughs> <laughs> well so I've had chickens for I've had chickens for about five years and currently we have seven seven hens. Let's see we have three Rhode Island Reds um, Silver laced blind oat and two gold laced blind oats. And so, wow. my, I guess, kind of thing is, I didn't realize how destructive chickens can be. I didn't fully respect their digging and shredding and kicking abilities. So, I guess what I'm struggling with is, you know, they have their coop and they have their, you know, their run area, which is fairly spacious. But I would like to, you know, have them out in the garden area or the backyard more. But you know, I struggle with, you know, if you have bark dust here and, or, you know, some sort of mulch, it's going to get kicked over there and, and, you know, they do get into uh, veggies and ornamentals. I know I had trouble over the yeah. summer. It was, um, you know, it's really dry here and really the only thing that was moist or irrigated were the plants that I had drippers on and I think the chickens, you know, they sense that and it was soft and they like to get in there. So, you know, I've kind of really <laughs> cut back on letting them get out. Um, so I'm wondering if anyone has or you have any ideas about um, maybe some ways to distract them or keep them happy when they're out there and so they aren't getting into trouble. Um, one thing I have found that works well is to let them out, you know, right an hour before dusk or something because then I, you know, I know that they're going to go roost. Right. And so that works pretty well. So they get a little right. time. It's not enough to, like, yeah. trash everything, but they get to run around for a while. So do you have any right. thoughts on ways to – integrate them into the garden where they're not going to be doing damage. Oh no, chickens are not good garden partners. Not at all. I mean, they'll they'll scratch and they'll aerate and they'll turn your soil over and all that and they'll eat all your bugs, good bugs, bad bugs, worms, you know, so that's not really helpful. And then once you plant, they'll eat all your seedlings. And then once they start to grow, they'll eat all your plants. You know, they'll eat the leaves, the stems, they'll eat the fruit. You know, they won't just eat the buggy tomatoes. They'll eat all your tomatoes. Um, so they really aren't very good in the garden at all, but they do have benefits. Um, they're fertilizer, you know, they're, they're poop. <laughs> you can fertilize it, and it makes awesome garden fertilizer. And you can let them into your garden after you've harvested. So, like, in the fall, let them in and let them eat all the stalks and roots and scratch things up and... Also in the spring, I let them in before I plant anything, and they do eat all the worms. But, you know, at least they, they do scratch through the soil and turn it over, and they get the weeds out, and they make it easier for you to go in and, and finish up. Um, but basically, you have to fence your garden in, and your ornamentals, and your shrubs, and everything, because, like you said, they're, they're very destructive little things. <laughs> yeah, their, their ability to scratch and, you know, dig and is pretty pretty impressive. Um, yeah, so my problem, I guess I end up not really letting them into the garden area much at all because I have, um, you know, fall things planted in the fall and stuff that overwintered um, still in the spring. And so I'm trying to kind of compromise by bringing the garden to them to some extent. I mean, I've been collecting big armloads of weeds and grass and stuff that I rip up and tossing it in and trying to almost start a compost heap, you know, where they can really dig around. And so so that, that's been helping. But, that's yeah. an excellent idea. 
and it keeps being entertained. I also section off a part of my run, and I actually plant a garden for them in the summer, all kinds of leafy greens and marigolds and all that kind of stuff. And I just, you know, let it grow and I keep it fenced off. And then once everything's ready, I open it up, and within, you know, a couple of days, they've destroyed it. But they really enjoy it <laughs> for that couple of days. And it doesn't. I mean, you know, planting from seed costs practically nothing. You know, so it, it, and I'll, I'll plant it a couple times throughout the summer for them. Just keep planting. They destroy it. I plant it again. They destroy it. But you know, it's fun. We love them. Yeah. Maybe. Uh, I'll uh, oh, go ahead, Bryn. Happy, happy chickens produce happy eggs, right? <laughs> yeah. They nice. do more nutritious. You know, they don't get in trouble as much if you give them something to do that's destructive that you want them doing. So. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Lisa. That reminds me of um, a an idea that I want to do, if I can just get the time, is to do some low, um, like raised beds and put kind of a wire cage over, let's say if I had four beds to three cages, and always have something growing in the three covered ones and then just move, you know, the one cover onto the empty one and let the chickens, you know, um, tear up whatever's in that one and just kind of keep rotating it through. And then someone else, um, I think it was Christy Wilhelmy, um, said that she had heard of an idea to do like a raised bed but put um, hardware cloth, maybe about six mm -hmm. stuff grows up through and the chickens can just walk around on the top and pack anything that comes through so that uh, they don't actually you know, destroy the roots. So I guess there's some different ways to do that. I do that. I call it their salad bar. It's, it's maybe three feet <laughs> by four feet and it's a raised bed with a huge roof. A hinged top with the hardware cloth, and I plant whatever you know, millet or um, winter rye or whatever in there. And you're right, it grows up through, and then they just kind of peck off what grows up through, but they can't scratch the roots out. And they really, really like that. I mean, that's and it's it's movable, so I can you know move it around to different areas inside the run. But that is a very good idea, also. Cool. So um, I'm excited to see we have um, Melina, I think that's how you pronounce her name, from Google. Um, she, she asked first if you were, if you produce your own chicks. Well, I mean, I, I don't, you know, personally lay the eggs, but I, <laughs> I have um, hatched chicks myself, yeah. I, I actually prefer to do that, um, and if you can do it under a hen, instead of in an incubator, that's the best. Because the hen does everything. She keeps them warm. You know, she turns the eggs. Um, she'll show them how to eat. She'll have them out there, like two days old, scratching around and looking for bugs and stuff. So that that really is a lot of fun, and it's really easy. Now, is that cool. with the and then that's... another? Oh, go ahead, Bryn. Go ahead. Sorry. Oh, I was just going to say is that <laughs> we got a little uh... delay, don't we? <laughs> With a uh, the, with the hens that actually laid the eggs, or do you get a broody hen and then get fertilized eggs and you know put them under? Yeah, or you I, I um, well, we haven't had a horse recently, so I've bought hatching eggs um, and put them under a broody hen. Um, but but now we do actually have fertile eggs, so you know if I can just stick them under one of the hens. I might have to try that sometime. <laughs> yeah. So it looks like Melina so, had a couple um, more questions, huh, Bren? <laughs> yeah, we must have a weird delay tonight. <laughs> That's fine. Um, yeah, Melina was asking, uh, what what do you do with the uh, chickens that no lo longer are laying the eggs or laying well? Oh, just keep feeding them and locking them up at night and letting them play during the day. You know. I mean, as I always tell people, our cat has never laid an egg in his life, and we still feed him every day. So, you know, they're, they're pets. What can I say? Right. <laughs> I guess that's a little bit of a, you know, if, if they're pets, then you're going to just keep them and let them grow through their old age. But some people, you know, figure, consider them to be, you know, more of livestock, I guess, or, you know, workers, so if they aren't laying eggs after three years, it's going to be a tricky question of what how to, what to do with them yeah. or how to deal with that. And then she had one more question. Do you have any yeah. perennial forage? Oh, do you want to go ahead and address that a little bit? Oh, uh, perennial foliage. Um, yeah, I actually have inside the run. I have rose bushes. I have a lot of hawthorn, some evergreens. And I just um, ring the roots with bricks or pavers and make like a chicken wire cage around the plant. And once it's maybe two feet tall, 
the chickens can't reach up any higher than that. So you can actually plant things inside your run to make it look nicer and it gives them shade and everything. And, you know, once they're, they're grown taller, they won't bother them. So you can, you can do all kinds of landscaping right inside your run, which is kind of fun. Yeah. <laughs> It's like uh, it's like a larger uh, miniature garden, like a little fairy garden, only with chickens, right? <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> you can make I made a little path with pavers, you know. Yeah, yeah. that's cute. <laughs> Have you found any plants that um, chickens avoid, or do you know that there's any that that would be toxic to them that people should be aware of? Oh, there's a huge list of toxic plants. Um, I mean, it's it's way too long. I actually have it booked, bookmarked, and when I go to the garden centers, I print it out and bring it with me. I mean, it's just, it's just huge. There's tons of things that could be toxic, you know, in large enough amounts. So I try to avoid those things. Um, you know, everything from azaleas to oleander. You know, some of the things that are toxic to you know lots of other animals, holly. Mm -hmm. um, but for the most part, they're not going to eat them. You know, unless they're starving, they kind of know what to avoid and what not to to avoid. So I, I wouldn't go crazy worrying about it. Like I wouldn't rip out all of your your landscaping if there's something that you know might be toxic. Um, but it's not a bad idea. I use the Cornell University um, toxic plant list. I think it's what it's called, and they've got a pretty comprehensive list of of what could possibly be toxic. That'd be good to keep track of. Um, what about just advice for someone who's considering getting chickens. Do you have some words of wisdom? Well, I think Bren kind of touched on, you know, look at the different kinds of coops. Think about how many chickens you want. Check your regulations to make sure you're actually allowed chickens and, you know, how many you, you can have and if you can have roosters and, and things like that. And then... Um, you know, think about where you're going to put your coop in your run and, and how you're going to protect, you know, whatever lawn or, or um, landscaping that you do have. But other than that, I mean, it, it's really just the predator thing. I mean, I don't know about you, but that's really the only stumbling block or hurdle that we've had. Everything else has just been real easy with them. You know, it's, it's just those darn predators. <laughs> yeah, that's been my experience, too. I haven't had any chickens get sick or anything. We haven't had any, you know, any problems with that. Um, it's the raccoons for us um, around my place. Mm. I had a, yeah. yeah, about. My last, this batch of chickens is just going great and um, I just love them. My last batch um, had got, uh, well, I had these Americanas and they were just kind of cuckoo and, and then I forgot to close <laughs> them in one night and the coons got in and it was just all kind of a disaster. Oh. So. Yeah. A massacre, yeah. Yeah, actually one of the... Chickens, <laughs> it only take Yeah. One of the Americanas, I, mm -hmm. I went home and I was in the yard and I looked across the street and um, she was across the street on the sidewalk and I was like, hmm, that's not good. What's going on? And so <laughs> I realized what had happened that they had, you know, what, her, her buddy had gotten taken by the raccoon and she was just, she was out of there. She was like, I'm not <laughs> going back. In Smart. That. So, yeah. I, I don't actually know what happened to that chicken. She ran off, and I did not chase her down. So, <laughs> um, is there a? Do you have a? You said you mentioned you like the Americanas. Do you have any um, breeds you would recommend or a favorite breed? Oh, um, actually, I do think Americanas are kind of nuts. Brenda and I were talking about that earlier. Um, they're they're walking chickens. <laughs> but the eggs are pretty. <laughs> so it's not just me. I thought they were just the kookiest chickens. I was just like, what is with these chickens? But <laughs> okay, no, they're, they're pretty much. <laughs> um, I have them just for the eggs, but if they did not lay blue eggs, then then I would not have them. I, I like um, buffs, australorps. Like, you know, I like some of the more calm, friendly, sit on your lap kind of chickens. Um, those are those are really good layers and just just really nice calm chickens. Yeah, I mean I agree. I've had uh, the Buff Orpingtons and they've been really mellow. And I have a Barred Rock that's really sweet and the Rhode Island Reds are fine, mm -hmm. easy, easy keepers. I've had Rhode Island Reds too, and they're just they're just good solid chickens. Like no drama, no attitude. You know, she would just get up, lay her egg, eat her food, poop, scratch around, go to bed. 
Utility Chicken, Rhode Island Reds. They're just like all business. Um, so they're not a bad breed at all. Now, um, in my area, I'm in Northwest Ohio, um, the main place that you can go to get chickens is like one of the uh, farm stores, like whether, whether it be Tractor Supply or we have a new family home farm store up in, I think I said that it's a new anyways do you is there where where can if somebody wants to get chickens where do you where do you go buy a chicken well that really is your best bet is the feed store I mean most feed stores order from the natural national hatcheries mm -hmm. and you know if you order direct from a hatchery there's usually a minimum and a lot of times they don't survive the shipping because you're only ordering a few and so it's it's really better just to go to your feed store when you're starting out you know just just see what they've got hopefully they've got breeds that do well in your climate right you know so so you know if you're in Ohio you know they're gonna pick ones that are gonna do well where you are so I would definitely say start out there okay that was my other question I'm sure um, maybe chickens are like plants and they don't all do well in the colder temperatures you know so maybe there's a, a better variety that you know you 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 wouldn't have to say put a heat lamp on or you know just make sure they have their their hay or, or their straw whatever the bedding um, is is that is that common? Like, <laughs> does that make sense? <laughs> Sorry. Well, chickens, chickens pretty much all do well in the cold. I mean, they're like most animals; they handle cold a lot better than heat. So, if you're okay. somewhere that it gets cold and you have a nice, you know, coop that's not drafty and you have the right number for your coop, they're probably going to be fine. Okay. But if you live in the south, then heat is an issue. I mean, they can literally die of heat exhaustion. So, you want to go with the Mediterranean breeds and you know breeds that were were bred. For the warmer climate, so that is a very good point. Mm -hmm. Okay. I was wondering, Lisa, do you have an automatic um, door for your chicken coop, um, or do you just go out every day and manually? Oh, I open. do. <laughs> well, I mean, I work from home, so I'm like I'm always here. So you know, I open up in the morning and um, close up at night. Plus, we have ducks, and ducks really aren't very well behaved. So if we had an automatic door. Chickens would go in, that door would close, and the ducks would all be out in their pool swimming. So, you know, I, I really need to be there and shoo everybody in. But for people who, you know, if you want to go away, or if, if you're, you know, if your kids have a soccer game and it won't be over, you know, till after dark, or if you want to go out to dinner, the automatic doors really are good because, you know, they slam shut and nothing's getting in there till morning. Boy, yeah, been... hearing about all these, uh, hearing about all these rowdy animals, I don't feel so bad living close to a uh, college town. <laughs> it sounds like you, you've got your rowdies in your backyard too. <laughs> <laughs> Ducks are out there partying in the pond, huh? Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I they might are. need to they are. You know, I just hear Marley and Margarita Machine going, and I'm like, <laughs> darn those ducks. <laughs> Yeah, it reminds me of that book. I noticed uh, them. <laughs> Go ahead, Anna. You know, sorry. I was going to say uh, there's uh, <laughs> the book Click Clack Moo, uh, Cows That Type, and then there's the, yeah. one, the ducks. Yeah. Are, yeah. Um, I did. Yeah. Um, I noticed. I noticed on your website, Fresh Eggs Daily, that you had a post with your chickens and your ducks are kind of together. Do they all kind of do they roost together? Well, they do share the run. Um, okay. We've had ducks from the very beginning. You know, we've had chickens and ducks together, so they share the run, and then they sleep separately. We had a, a little coop when we first started, like you said, and then the flock kind of outgrew that. So I, I built a bigger coop and moved everybody into it, and the chickens decided they were going to stay in the old coop. So they now live in the old chicken coop. They sleep there, um, and the chickens <laughs> sleep in the big coop because the ducks just, they're, you know, they're not really fond of the chickens so much. They they get along, but they would rather the chickens weren't really there. So, so yeah. So the ducks have the little coop, and they just sleep on the floor on the straw. So they're easy. Yeah, that's cool. <laughs> I was wondering, do you um, I have had trouble with you know keeping their water clean because they kick and they scratch and they get poo in it. Um, so I don't know if you tried using the like a water 
the little drippers at all, or do you just use like a, you know the hanging galvanized pail, or do you have a good water solution, different one? Um, well, no, because we have ducks. I tried the the hanging like the gravity waterer, and the ducks learned if they kept poking the thing, it would keep dripping water out. They can empty that thing in two seconds flat. Oh, so I had to give that up. <laughs> So I just use big rubber tubs um, for the water, and the ducks swim in it, and the chickens drink out of it, and whatever. I mean, you know, it gets changed every day, and everyone's been fine for years, so I have to believe that, you know, drinking a little mud is not bad. Um, but if you do just have chickens, I think that the galvanized, if you hang them, so you get them up a little higher, you know, so they can't kick dirt or shavings into them, and, you know, I think those probably work the best for chickens. Um, the, the nipple drip waterers, I don't know, I just don't, I don't feel it's really no, a normal way for a bird to drink, you know. I mean, they don't nurse as babies, so I don't yeah. know. Yeah, people swear by them, but I'm just a little more traditional than that. I have a little bit of a combination. I have the galvanized hanging, and then um, I also made a, a dripper thing. I actually did a blog post on it, but it was um, a five-gallon bucket that hangs outside the coop, and then it's a, a tube with, like, three drippers on it, kind of like you could buy online. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of the backup, so it just seems to work kind of well in combo. Although in the winter, of course, I don't want that one to freeze and, you know, split the pipe and the drippers, so I have to put it away in the winter. So um, that seems to work. Yeah. yeah, I agree. As a backup water, I think, it, you know, using a combination is good. And, I mean, I put out multiple you know, I don't just put out one water because if somebody tips it over or somebody does poop in it, you know, they, they really need water. So, you know, there's water, like, everywhere for everybody. Right. I did. Um, I've seen chickens in some strange places. I remember even seeing some of them on a balcony in uh, Philadelphia before. <laughs> um, so, you know, it makes me wonder. So if you have chickens, are you able to travel at all? I mean, how long could you possibly be gone? I mean, can they, you know, with the feeders and the drippers, can that keep them satisfied for a few days? Sure. Yeah, I mean, a feeder, you know, you could get a huge feeder and fill it up. I mean, chickens won't overeat. They'll eat okay. what they need and then stop. So okay. you could definitely put food out for a week or so. The water, um, I don't know, is yours hooked up to your hose so it has a constant water supply? Mine is not right now. I mean, that's something that you a person could do. Um, so it could just be right. always refilling. Um but I found with a five-gallon bucket and then the, I think the galvanized ones, like two and a half gallons, um, it can last pretty long. I usually just hire a, there's a gal yeah. down the street that will come and close them in and let them out and check on them. So that's usually what I do when we leave. Yeah, I, I would do that too. I wouldn't feel totally comfortable, you know, just leaving because you never know what can happen. And, you know, you'd hate to come back to, to just find some disaster. Um, but usually if you ask somebody and you tell them they can have all the eggs, then they're perfectly happy to take care of them for a few days. Yep, get the egg bonus. <laughs> right. Let's see. Um, Angie from the Freckled Rose had a question, and she said, what kind of treats do you feed your chickens and ducks? Well, I try... Um, especially, you know, in the summer, because I do have a big garden, that I try to give them mostly stuff from the garden. You know, I grow a lot of herbs for them, a lot of vegetables, um, you know, head to the garden on the way to the coop and, and just give them all kinds of garden scraps. I save all my kitchen leftovers, ends of things, and, um, you know, if there's not enough leftovers enough to make another meal or if I, you know, burn something or something is just really terrible, then they pretty much get everything. I mean, we don't compost because either our dogs or our chickens eat all the leftovers. Um, and then in the winter, I give them cracked corn, and, and I supplement with scratch grains and things like that. But, you know, I just try to give them a variety of healthy foods. You know, we eat brown rice, and we eat a lot of vegetables, a lot of fish. You know, they'll eat meat scraps. They'll pretty much eat anything. Huh. Yeah, they do. I mean, I throw all our compost, you know, our, our table scraps and stuff in, in there, and there's really nothing left. I mean, I just <laughs> rake up the... Mm -hmm. They're bedding, you know, every once in a while when I get the compost pile going and, and use that. But um, there's not, they don't leave much. 
Yeah, as far as treats, I'm I guess similar <laughs> yeah. to you, Lisa. I just give them lots of a variety of stuff from the garden and and our compost stuff from the kitchen. And um, I've been grabbing big handfuls of grass and you know weeds, dandelions. They yeah. just love that. It's like giving them a big salad. They just go crazy. So it doesn't have to be. And, and that stuff is so nutritious. Yeah, yeah, I do a lot of that. <clears throat> Um, let's see, Marina had a question here. Did you see that, Bren? Um, with the galvanized waters, does the apple cider vinegar ruin it? And I'm not entirely sure what she means. Do you know what she's referring to, Lisa? It'll it'll rust. Yeah, the, the, the apple cider vinegar will rust the galvanized waterers. So if you're adding that, then I would use plastic waterers or even put out just a separate bowl, you know, a glass or a um, plastic bowl with the apple cider vinegar water in it and save your galvanized water for just plain water. Okay, so maybe I'm missing something and my chickens have been neglected all this time, but the apple cider vinegar does what yeah. for the chickens? I, I must have missed that, it, hopefully. <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm sure your grandmother used to drink apple cider vinegar and she probably lived to be 100. <laughs> apple cider vinegar has so many health benefits for everybody. It's um, for chickens especially because they're so susceptible to respiratory problems, and it actually helps um, kill the the fungus or whatever it is inside them that causes respiratory issues. Um, it can help with calcium absorption, so their their eggshells will have you know be stronger. Um, I do I do a tablespoon of apple cider vinegar per gallon of water a couple times a week. I mean, no strict schedule. I just kind of keep the bottle down there, and when I'm filling up, I just kind of put a splash in. Um, but I think it keeps them healthier. You know, it, it's just great for their immune systems, and um, just an all-around, it helps uh, keep the algae out of the water, too, in the summer. It'll, you know, keep your water cleaner. So, yeah, your chickens have been majorly neglected there. I know. I'm feeling bad so. now. <laughs> Go ahead. Um, so Mary Smith on Google here is asking, how do you recommend uh, predator proofing the coop? Well, over all of your vents and windows and things, you should have half inch or even better quarter inch welded wire. Um, you know, stapled, bolted, um, not just stapled, you know, stapled then bolted. So, you know, a raccoon can't rip it out. Um, and then the door, you know, raccoons can undo deadbolts. They can undo latches. So I have a um, deadbolt at the top of my coop door, and then I have a um, locking latch with a, with a little um, spring-loaded, you know, lock on it. And then on the little pop door, same thing, spring-loaded um, locking eye hooks because you know that, that they come around every night and they're trying your door. So oh, yeah. you've got to make sure that your your locks are better proof and that all the vents are closed up. I mean, people have said that mink or weasel will get in like a one inch hole in their coop. You know, so you gotta you gotta make sure that, that you know nothing's rotted out. Don't have a dirt floor on your coop because something will dig right underneath and right through. Right, and, and raccoons are everywhere. I know when I lived in town, we'd sit on the front porch at night, and <laughs> those were our animals we watched. They'd come out of the sewer even, just walking down the street. Yeah. <laughs> You'd be careful. <laughs> yeah, There's lots of lots of coons. And it probably depends a little bit on where you're living. I mean, it, some people have to contend with bears, and maybe, you know, yeah. grouping against a raccoon and a bear might be two different things. So. <laughs> depending on what, what critters you might have coming your way. But, um, you know, I was, again, bad chicken owner, and I just used um, chicken wire on my Ooh. coop. And I know, but so far, so far so good. Um, nothing, I, I don't know if I just don't have, like, the river coons, or maybe they're just not as, as gnarly as some coons out there, or maybe I've just been lucky. But uh, so far so good. But anyway, yeah, recommended is welded wire. Um, to keep them out. Yes, and it's good too when you're first starting out. If you put a trail cam up, um, just put a trail 
trail cam up and, and see what's prowling around your coop at night. You know, people have sworn, we don't have any predators. I've never seen anything all the years we've been here. They put one up, and they'll see bobcat. They'll see, you know, raccoons, possums, skunks. I mean, all kinds of crazy things roaming around. So, you know, for like 50 or $60, you can pick up a cheap trail cam, and you really get an eye-opening experience as to what's coming around to eat your chickens. Totally. Um, I like um, Mary just asked another question. Um, so, you know, you talked about your chickens being a part of the family, you know, a pet. Is there, do you have any suggestions for introducing your farm dog to the chickens? Yeah, we've actually, um, we had a 10-year-old German Shepherd when we first got the chickens. Yeah. So figure, I mean, she's, you know, older <laughs> and she's a shepherd. And we, um, we got them as chicks, and we would let her go in and look at them and smell them, and we would take them out and show them to her. And she watched them grow up, and then when we put them outside, she, they were fine. So she, unfortunately, we lost her, and we got a German Shepherd puppy who was a spaz. And we're thinking, there's no way that she, you know, same thing. We would let them come out. We would put them on her paws. We would put them on her back. You know, we'd let her smell them and look at them. We kept her on a leash for a long time, though. You know, she wasn't allowed off leash until we knew that she, you know, would sit, stay, drop it, leave it, you know, all those commands. And she's never bothered them. And then two years ago, we rescued a corgi who was about three years old. And we're thinking, okay, this is not going to go well. You know, another herding dog. Yeah. He probably had never seen a chicken in his life. And same thing, we did a lot of on-leash, and at first he would run the fence and bark at them, and, you know, he just wanted to get at them, and we just kept, you know, bringing him down when we would feed and keep him on the leash and, you know, do the commands and, you know, let him know that it wasn't acceptable. They can never chase them, you know, touch them, play with them. I mean, nothing. You have to, you know, set your boundaries. And we've never had a problem. And now we go down to feed, the two dogs just hang out. You know, even if the chickens are chasing each other or whatever, dogs just kind of sit there and... You know, it's. I think it's really important. That's more important than just saying we're going to always close the door and not have the dog out when the chickens are out because, you know, something happens and someone leaves the door open and, you know, that's just heartbreaking when someone's dogs kill their chickens. I mean, that's just, you know, not what you want to happen. No, but it's what they do sometimes. I know. Hmm. <laughs> But they're smart. Dogs really do want to please you. I mean, they if you just teach them what you want from them and, yeah. you know, teach them the rules, they're fine with it. Sure. Well, I just wanted to thank everyone. Um, we had Angie and uh, Melina and Mary that typed in questions. So before we wrap it up, if anyone wants to pop in another question for us, um, we'll probably go a few more minutes. Um, I was yeah. wondering, um, Lisa, since I missed out on the apple cider vinegar, is there any other supplements or additives that you suggest that I might be missing? Although my chickens yes. seem to be doing um, fine, but <laughs> yeah. garlic. Um, you can add garlic powder to their feed, or what I do is when I cook, I cook with a lot of garlic, and when I cut the ends off. Um, I just save those and I give those to the chickens. You can toss them right into their water. And garlic, again, I mean, it has health benefits like for people. It's it's just really super for their immune system. And some people think that it can help um, keep mites and ticks and lice and stuff off because those biting insects don't like the taste of blood with garlic in it. So, I mean, I, I do that. And that's a easy way to just, you know, kind of supplement them with the garlic. It's the ends of the little cloves that you'd be throwing away anyway. Mm -hmm. So those are probably the two most important supplements that I use. I'll have to give that a, a try. I noticed um, last summer just how many mosquitoes were chewing on my chickens, you know, right when they go to roost. Um, I was... I don't know why I didn't really notice it before, but there was a whole, or if it was just particularly bad, but there was just a whole cloud of them, and I was thinking, oh, these poor, mm. poor chickens. I mean, I know I hate mosquitoes, and to have to sit there and roost, and, you know, they, yeah. chickens probably don't notice it too much, but. Um, let's see, Brian has a question. Um, how early would you introduce other treats to your chickens besides starter feed? Hmm. Oh. I do it right away. Um, I've watched mother 
hens hatch chicks and you know I'll take them out for little field trips I usually keep them in a dog crate on the floor of the coop you know while they're um, growing up because they let the other chickens get used to them and they get used to the environment and the pathogens and stuff but I'll you know open the, the door and let the mother hen take the chicks out and she'll have two day old chicks out there they'll be pulling worms out of the ground they'll be eating grass and weeds and so I really think it's healthy to um, you know start your baby chicks on things I'll um, pick clumps of grass and dirt and put them right in the brooder with them you know it gives them something to do they like to peck in the dirt they munch on the grass they, they just get used to kind of being a chicken um, so I, I kind of keep treats to oatmeal, scrambled eggs, weeds. I mean, I don't go nuts with the treats for the babies because you really do want them to eat their starter feed. Is you know, it's like a baby person. You know, you're not going to start giving them like you know popsicles and crazy Jello and all kinds of you know nonsense. Little oatmeal, little egg, you know, basic stuff. <laughs> yeah, getting I've hungry. <laughs> yeah. Well, I've, I've given my sounds my good. <laughs> earthworms when they're pretty small and that is just hilarious. I mean they get so excited and they do tug of wars and run yeah. around and <laughs> so well Lisa it's been so fun having you on. I really appreciate you taking the time out to join us and um, share some chicken talk with us and we've had some great questions uh, from our viewers so it's been wonderful. Any last questions Bran or anyone else? Thoughts? Um, I was hoping maybe Lisa could share a few words about her new book that she has out, um, Fresh Eggs Daily. Oh, my book, now that you mention it. I have a book out, which basically is everything I do on my blog, Raising Chickens Naturally. It has all about apple cider vinegar and feeding garlic, so you know you might want to pick up a copy, Adam, and read through it. Um, but yeah, it's available on Amazon and where books are sold. And I'm working on a second book that's um, due out this fall that'll be sort of a companion book, which I'm really excited about. So um, and in the meantime, of course, you can find me on Facebook or Instagram or Twitter or my blog at Fresh Eggs Daily. And um, look for the new chicken boots coming out <laughs> probably next week. Brent already wants a copy. They're very cute. You don't even have to have chickens to wear them. So I'm excited. I'll be helping to promote those. <laughs> <laughs> They're cute. I like them. <laughs> How about you, what Adam? Is your foot? I was just thinking I would, I would like to get in a pair of those. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you again, Lisa. Yeah. I appreciate it. Take care. Thanks. It's been fun.